Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Well, it's been a week since this happened, and apparently during that week, my brother came over and decided to fix my computer. That seems to go extremely wrong. And while my computer still works perfectly, we had to check a lot of parts to see what was going on. We hooked up my computer to, yeah, we, we hooked up my laptop to the TV using the HDMI cable to see what was going on. Turns out it actually works, so you can actually see what it really looks so You can actually see how clear it looks compared to what it looks like on my computer. So that explains why something was really going wrong. So I guess it wasn't a virus after all. Something was going extremely wrong with my screen. And that's what's causing this to happen. So it looks to me like I need a new replacement for it. So yeah. And I hope I do someday too. But right now I'm having money problems. So I'm going to try to see if I can figure out how much the new screen replacement will cost. And hopefully this will work on this computer. And it will never happen. And hopefully this never happens again. Because I can't stand errors like this. Especially all these damages that fix my screen to ever happen because it's really annoying. I can't stand that crap. Well, anyway, um, with that, I'm going to be doing a new movie review this week in honor of the passing of one of my favorite actors and comedians of all time, Robin Williams. Yeah, and I always grew up watching all of his stand ups. His TV show, Mork and Mindy, he had an appearance on Happy Days, which started it all, and many movies that followed. Yeah, he was definitely part of my childhood days, too, and, and he's definitely right up there with all my favorite comedians out there, such as George Carlin, God Was His Soul, with Billy Crystal, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld, and yeah, Dave, Dave Chappelle and all the rest. Yeah, I, I just love these guys. I grew up watching with them, and they make me laugh so hard that I just never get tired of them. Yeah. Well, I had a lot of favorite movies of his, too, that really enjoy my socks off. Yeah, one of my favorites of his was Club Paradise, Yeah, which yeah happens to be written and directed by Harold Ramis, who, yeah, once again, he passed away, with Peter O'Toole as well. Um, great movie too. I think that was definitely one of Rob Williams's surprisingly underrated uh, performances I ever saw. But he definitely brought the humor in him. And then he had a lot of films that followed too, such as uh, Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poets Society, yeah, The Fisher King, Awakenings, Hook, Jumanji, Flubber, Good Will Hunting. The list goes on and on and on. But one of my favorite comedies that followed all of that is the movie that I'm going to review today. And that is Mrs. Doubtfire. That's right. Which happens to be my all-time favorite movie. Because I would watch this movie over and over. In fact, I can even watch this, you know, during my happy time or any time whenever there's something good on to watch. This is the movie I, I would tune into. Anyway, this was the, the 2007 DVD release that's also known as the Behind the Scenes Edition, which has all the extras that's included on this, with a slip cover that has the, uh, of course, the Hollywood movie money of Horton Hears a Who. Yeah, I remember having that, because I went to go see it with that ticket. And all these uh, all new with interviews and props and more. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically the same as the cover. Yeah, they also had the same cover on the Blu-ray as well. And they got tons of extras all, all the way on the back. Yeah, as you can see right here. Yeah. I heard that the... Um, I believe the Blu-ray doesn't have the commentary as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah, I think that's a shame because... This is definitely worth having for that. But if I ever find the Blu-ray, I'll definitely buy it to see the difference. 
because I heard their HD copy of this movie looks you know, pretty decent the first time. It actually looks very good on DVD as well. But it was a must own. I would watch this anytime. Okay, the movie stars Robin Williams with Sally Field, Lisa Jacob, Matthew Lawrence, yeah, the brother of Joy Lawrence, and Andrew. Mara Wilson in her very first screen debut. Pierce Brosnan, of course. Harvey Feinstein, Scott Capero, you know, with Polly Holiday, Martin Mull, and Robert Prosky. And it's directed by Chris Columbus, who gave us films such as The Adventures in Babysitting, Home Alone, along with its second movie, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, as well as the first two Harry Potter films, and Percy Jackson. And the Lightning Thief. Yeah. Anyway, let's get right to it. The movie begins when a talented but recently unemployed voice actor named Daniel Hillard, who is played by Robin Williams, has been living in San Francisco, devoted to his three children, Lydia, Chris, and Natalie, who are all played by Lisa Jacob, Matthew Lawrence, and Mara Wilson, along with his wife, Miranda, who is played by Sally Field, who who after all this time had considered him as irresponsible and immature and not a very good disciplinarian. So, not to mention they've been having some tough times during their marriage. So, during that day, you know, despite of his bad report card from school, uh, Daniel decided to throw Chris a huge birthday party filled with zoo animals, kids, presents, and a whole lot of stuff that causes a whole lot of that causes a huge chaos between the elderly neighbor next door. So, which eventually she calls the cops and Miranda to come around and stop the party, even though she was bringing in some birthday cake, you know, for Chris. So, <laughs> yeah. So after she had to clean up all the mess that Daniel had caused, she finally had snapped. And, and created one of the simple, hurtful words in movie history. In movie history, she wants a divorce. So after the first custody hearing, the judge had granted Miranda a huge custody of the children since Daniel doesn't have a steady job nor a suitable residence. So in order to get that, he needs to find a new apartment and a new job working at a television station in San Francisco to be, and live independently and be able to see his children only once a week on Saturdays. But Daniel thought this whole thing was a bad idea, so... And then, sooner or later, he actually learned that Miranda has intended to hire a housekeeper to take care of the kids, since she won't be around to take care of them quite longer, so... With that, Daniel had looked at one of her classifieds to hire one of them, and decided to use one of these crazy voiceover, you know, one of his crazy voiceovers on the phone to pretend like he's one of those those housekeepers that's <laughs> that was going to be hired to, for the job until she finally found one that turned out to be an elderly British nanny that's simply dubbed from the newspaper headlines, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, that's right. And once Miranda finally invited Mrs. Delphire to her place, Daniel has enlisted his gay brother, who's also a makeup artist, named Frank, who's played by Harvey Feinstein, with his partner Jack, to transform him into the nanny herself, Mrs. Delphire. So during his first day of the job as the nanny, Miranda nor the children had recognized him all the way, and they and during their presence, though, the children didn't, was already had struggling all this tough times, you know, since they couldn't see their father until only you know one day a week during the divorce thing that's happening. So, you know, at first, though, she started making the rules by by causing them to do their homework, and and they didn't get which, yeah, which apparently, you know, they. 
they got really upset because of it. And by the time that uh, Mrs. Doubtfire was actually making up for all the mess that she, that she caused for to including all the all that disaster that was happening while cooking all the food and causes her boobs to be on fire. <laughs> Including that one memorable scene where once he was <laughs> kind of all that fire, he, he says, First day as a woman, and I'm getting hot flashes. <laughs> yeah. So he finally orders some, so he or she finally decided to order some takeout food and had to serve it for the family, so everything seems to go quite as well as, as it's planned. So after a while, things seem to go completely well for Daniel and Mrs. Dalfar as it became one of the biggest jobs that he had to take so he get to finally see his children again. Yeah. Meanwhile he's working, you know, different shifts during the day. And then get to see his kids, you know, once a day uh, on a week once a week. Well you know while trying to you know tidy up the place. Well that is until Miranda had a secret love interest who happens to be her friend named Stuart Deadmire, who's played by Chris Bosman, you know, who winds up spending time with her and her family, you know, during those, you know, yeah, during those times, which causes a huge rival of jealousy towards Daniel and Mrs. Delphire. So that's where it becomes a huge problem, where, you know, you know what he's going to do next. Well, meanwhile, you know, Daniel actually had meet the CEO of the television station named Jonathan Lundy, who's played by Robert Prosky, and they're talking about some plans on creating a new children's show that can replace their outdated one you know, about the dinosaurs and everything. And since he loved his performance, you know, just playing, you know, just playing around with the toy dinosaurs, you know, according to plan, you know, Jonathan decided to hire, you know, decided to invite Daniel for a lunch, uh, for a dinner meeting Friday night at Bridges in, in San Francisco. The only biggest problem, though, was that Mrs. Doubtfire, who was spending time you know, with Miranda and the kids, he was about to celebrate Miranda's birthday on that day, on that same night. Once of being, once of celebrating at the same restaurant that Daniel is actually attending for his boss, but that's where it becomes a huge problem once they start switching, you know, <laughs> when they're switching roles together. Where Daniel just goes around to the restaurant, you know, hanging out with the boss, talking to pit, and you know, talking about how to pitch some ideas on the new show that he's going to come up with, while drinking some scotch. Meanwhile, as disguised as Mrs. Delphire, he's hanging out with Miranda, Stuart, and her kids just to you know, just order some food and so on and so forth until the biggest reveal of all was when was when Mrs. Delphire had put some peppers on the food that Stuart had ordered until he started choking. So but that's when <laughs> Mrs. Delphire had come to the rescue and <laughs> and gave uh, Stuart a helmet uh, and gave him uh, a helmet maneuver and and try to get the and try to get that piece of the of the uh, I believe it's the uh, the shrimp that's in there out, out of his <laughs> out of his system. And that is until he finally reveals that Mrs. Doubtfire is actually you know, Daniel Hillard in disguise. So, yeah. After that, yeah, Miranda got so mad and so upset that they decided to leave. And, and during the next few days, you know, Daniel finally got the job working as Mrs. Doubtfire in the new children's series on on the television station while having to deal with their next custody while doing their next session at court about uh, during the past two months that things didn't seem to go 
quite as well as his plan, and he thought, you know, he just wanted to have a second chance to be able to meet the, ch to be able to spend more time with the children, and then having to waste their time you know, dealing with what he's doing. So yeah, it's, things didn't seem to go pretty well as, at court as it turned out to be. So yes, you know, after, so they had to deal with all these other problems and all this, all this um, big understandings. So as um, as days went by, and Miranda finally took care of all the paperwork and the, all the legal actions and everything. And after all this time, Daniel finally gets to see his kids again. As as far as he planned it to be, after all this time, and and then once they watched the uh, Mrs. Delphire at right at, towards the end of the movie, was when Mrs. Delphire had had read a letter about about a young girl who's talking about you know how her parents is being divorced and, and talk about the last words that behind all of this. So and the movie ends you know at a very at a very beautiful and very sad you know, high note. Yeah. But I gotta say, it was hilarious, hysterically funny, and I never get tired of it. But yet, it was pretty sad at the same time. Because it just feels, you know, what was it like, you know, when, you're, when your family winds up getting divorced after all this time, you know, despite of what was going on in their lives. And trust me on this one, you know, I had that experience myself, you know, during the later years after I saw this movie. Because, yes, my family had gone divorced for years now, and it's been going on for some time, and, yeah, it's it's very heartbreaking. I, I love one of the funniest scenes in the movie where, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, during the tune of the song, Do Lives Like a Lady from Aerosmith, you know, <laughs> he was, like, dancing around with the broom, you know, pretending like it's a guitar. Yeah, it, it was, and it was like a montage that felt more like a music video. It worked so well. And there were a lot of funny scenes too where, <laughs> yeah, he wants up, you know, being attacked by a mugger and <laughs> then he says, Back off, asshole! Beat it! Well, wow. <laughs> I was taking his purse and he said, Oh, the bastard! Take my purse! Yeah. And then there was another good scene where, <laughs> Where um, uh, where uh, Mrs. Delphire throws a a line on Stewart's head, and he says, "Oh, sir, I saw it. Some angry member of the kitchen staff. Did you not tip them? Oh, the terrors they went that way. It was a run by footing. I'll get them, sir. Don't worry." Yeah, loser. What are you looking at? Yeah, <laughs> it's a very funny movie, and I just laugh at everything that this movie has been going for, and they just, <laughs> it goes on and on and on, and, and I really enjoy it. I do agree that Miranda was a bitch in this movie, and you know, was played by Sally Field, and it, it kind of sucks because, you know, Sally Field's a great actress, but it's hard to believe that she had to play a bitch, she sure was. and. But I did love Pierce Brosnan in the movie as Stu. I, th I thought he was a credible stud. It's hard to believe that this will be the same guy who wants to play James Bond in the later years. Yeah. And he was good as James Bond. Also the fact that this was the debut of Mara Wilson you know, playing Natalie. And she's very good and extremely talented in this one. That later on she winds up having a career in films like Miracle and 34th Street remake as well as uh, Matilda. Yeah, those were good movies. And uh, and then of course Martin Lor Matthew Lawrence went on to do the TV series Superhuman Cyber Squad which was like uh, Ultraman but quite different. And that other TV show with the brothers you know, Joey and Andrew called Brotherly Love and then later joined the cast of Boy Meets World. Yeah. And some voice acting of Kiki's delivery service. Yeah. But he did a lot of work, you know, after all that. And yeah, it, it had a great cast. It was very funny. 
Yeah, I always love all the humor that Robin Williams had put up with, especially with all the voices that he was doing while talking to the, uh, the employer. And of course, you had to visit to him you know, Monday through Fridays on the evening, and that's where that one scene went in where, where he had to, <laughs> where it's, since, her, since his um, mask had flew all the way out the window and got squashed by a garbage truck. And he had to disguise himself by using you know, a white frosting cake. <laughs> yeah, and all that white frosting was all over his face. Yeah, pretending that he was hurt, you know, being wrapped up by that cream. And, <laughs> and all that white frosting starts to drop inside the, the cup of English tea that he was about to serve. It was, it was just hilarious. I, I, I couldn't stop laughing when I saw that scene in the movie. Especially when I went to see it in theaters back in 1993. Yeah, I was eight years old at the time, and, and I just I really enjoyed it so much. Yeah, it, it was fun. I, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. I would watch this any time of the week, no matter what. Um, you could definitely buy this movie on DVD and Blu-ray. Maybe you could watch it on any other site if you choose. Um, yeah, the DVD had a lot of great special features, as well as Blu-ray. had the the deleted scenes, uh, mostly longer and extended shots that they put in, that they were going to put into the movie, but didn't make it into the final shot. So it's kind of a shame. But on the other hand, though, I think it was better that way because it would make the movie even longer, like almost three hours. And some of those scenes were pretty unnecessary, except for maybe a few of the funny scenes, you know, such as the, the, the dishwashing scene and, and the other one. Yeah, where he was trying to put the pepper, yeah, that alternate scene where he's putting the peppers inside the food and <laughs> and as this guy as a chef, he was talking to the <laughs> to one of the chefs about the food. Yeah, it was just hilarious. A lot of great stuff here, and yeah, th this was one of Chris Columbus's best works since Home Alone and The Adventures of Babysitting, yeah, as well as Percy Jackson and. Harry Potter. Yeah. It, it was fun. I, I, I love this movie. I, I would watch this anytime. Yeah, it, it was fun. Definitely worth recommending if you get a chance. Yeah, yeah and it's just sad that you know this is uh, that this is the the best thing that Rob William has ever done. And it's just such a shame that he's no longer with us after all this time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen all of his great films, and and this was definitely one of my favorites, along with all the others. And it's just, it's just so depressing now that he's gone. Comedy sure hasn't been the same at once he's gone, and so is all the other comedians that I grew up with, including uh, you know, George Carlin and and so many others. It's it's just it's a really it's a really tough year this year. It's a really tough year so far. But I guess, you know, things have to happen every once in a while. Every now and then, you know, you never know if one of your favorite stars are going to live this long. Well, <laughs> that's all it is. But anyway, definitely check this movie out, especially if you're a Huge fan of Robin Williams. I know I am, and it's definitely and it's one of his best work ever. It was, it actually won an Oscar, and it definitely uh, also, I believe it was nominated for Golden Globes too, you know, including Best Actor for Robin Williams. So yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just never, it's just, this movie never gets old. It's worth it. So anyway, I give Mrs. Doubtfire a solid and hysterically funny five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and rest in peace, Robin Williams. You're one of the most talented, funny comedians of all time, and a tremendous actor. And I'll see you later. Bye.